Okay, so for um, number 17, we want to determine whether this geometric series is convergent or divergent. Um, and now for it to be divergent, we have to look at it and see what's going on. Uh, a geometric series is basically you have some constant A that is multiplied by a ratio that is um, raised to the natural numbers. And we're summing out all of these up. So we're going to have A plus A times R1 plus A times R2 and so on and so forth. So for it to be convergent, it means that it's getting closer and closer to some definite value, right? So if, if I just keep adding these terms and they're just, say, normal numbers then I'm never going to get closer to anywhere, right? Because my sum is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. The only way that it's going to converge to anywhere is if um, the terms that I'm adding, they're getting closer and closer to zero. Because if at some point I'm essentially adding zero, then my sum isn't changing, right? So for it to be convergent, it therefore means that the limit as n approaches infinity of rn is equal to zero. Because we can see that for each term, a doesn't change. However, r to the power of n does change. So that's the thing that needs to go to zero. And this happens if and only if um, the, the absolute value of r is less than one. Because if I take, say, one half and I raise it to a million, that's going to go to zero. Whereas if I take even like 1.01 .01 and I raise it to a million, that's going to grow. So. All we have to do now is we have to um, set up this series here, kind of express it in this form so that we can very clearly see what the ratio is. So um, for this series here, we have 3 minus 4 plus 16 over 3. And actually, because there's a bunch of multiples of 4s and multiples of 3, I'm just going to rewrite it as powers. So that's 3 to the power of 1. 4 to the power of 1 uh, plus 16 is 4 to the power of 2 over 3 to the power of 1 minus 64, so minus 4 to the power of 3 over 3 to the power of 2. And we can see that the pattern here, the next one would be plus 4 to the power of 4, 3 to the power of 3, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do here, um, actually, notice that our series, it's indexed at 0, right? So it means that we're going to have... Um, say this is we're going to have the term sub zero term sub one term sub two term sub three term sub four and so on so what i want to do here is i want to be able to express this as a function of the index right um so let's line these up correctly and the first index here is zero we can clearly see that there are multiples of four right you can see four to the power of one four to the power of two four to the power of three and similarly, there are multiples of 3, 3 to the power of 1, 3 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 3. And in fact, I'm just going to put here 3 to the power of 0 because it's 1, so it doesn't change. And instead of going 3 to the power of 1, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over 3 to the minus 1 because you can see that these mean the same thing. So this is going to be just plus 1 over 3 to the power of 1. And on top, I'm going to put 4 to the power of 0, just so that everything lines up nicely. Okay, so once we're here, we can very clearly see here that the term on the numerator, 4 to the power of n, this is aligned with the indexes, right? Because the first index is 0, and that's 4 to the power of 0. The second index is 1, 4 to the power of 1, 2, 4 to the power of 2, and so on. But now, uh, oops, that should be minus 1 over here. But now, the 3, it's not lined up with our index, right? Because I should expect 3 to the power of 0 to be our first term. However, our first term is 3 to the power of minus 1. So in order to make these align, um, instead of doing 3 to the power of n, I have to do 3 to the power of um, n minus 1. Because that means since 0 is my first term, right? that when I plug in 0 here, I'm actually going to have 3 to the, to the 0 minus 1. And then when I plug in 1, I'm actually going to have 1 minus 1, which is 0, right? And when I plug in 2, I'm actually going to have 2 minus 1, which is 1. So that's the way to make them align. Um, so we're nearly good to go. We do need to adjust some things. Because remember, our objective is to express this as some a times a ratio to the power of n. 
So I need to kind of condense these all into a single number raised to the power of n. Also, we can see here that the minus is alternating, right? It goes from plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So what it means is that we have a minus 1 raised to the power of n. Because whenever we have an even index, like 0 to 4, we can see that the terms are going to be positive, right? So even indexes. And then whenever we have odd indexes, so the first term, that's negative, the third term, that's negative. And if I do plug in, say, minus 1 to the power of 1, that's going to be negative, but minus 1 to the power of 2 is going to be positive. Okay, so this here is our sum, right, from 0 to infinity, and now we just have to clean it up a little bit. So to clean it up a little bit, I'm going to say that, okay, this is the same thing as 4, negative 4, because I'm just going to join the numbers, right, over 3 to the power of n, and then times one third. Because what I did here was I separated this n minus one into three to the power of n times um, three to the negative one. So maybe I'm just gonna move that in the front for it to align. Okay, so once I'm here, you can very clearly see that my a is the term one third and my r is negative four over three. And we can see that the basically this is definitely greater than 1, so it means that it is divergent. It fails the divergence test. And that is it for problem 17.